Well, greetings. Uh, my name is Chris Dreisbach, and I've been given the honor of uh, presenting a concert to you in place of what would normally be your Bible study on Sunday morning. So I'm very honored by that. When I uh, get in front of my brothers and sisters, I always try to tell a story that's a very important story to me. And it starts like this. I lived most of my life as an unbeliever and an atheist. And um, obviously something happened. And what happened is the story that I love to tell. So uh, I've got a song about probably the most famous adult conversion story in history. And uh, you'll know who I'm singing about immediately. Well, here's a little song about a guy named Saul. He was chasing down the Christians. He wanted to kill them all. Riding to Damascus, high on his horse, and the Lord threw a lightning bolt that knocked him off course. Our hero started having a bad day right then and there. Well, here's poor old Saul. He's just shaking on the ground. He hears a mighty voice up high and all around. Jesus said, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Saul said, who's that? Hey, I can't see. But you know, God was going to give him a better kind of sight. That's right. He saw the light. Saw the light. Light of the world sure did give him a fright. He's gonna tell everybody all about Jesus Christ. Shining so bright he saw the light. Well, Saul got up, but it wasn't how he planned. He went to Damascus being led by the hand. He spent three days in fasting and prayer till God called Ananias to visit him there. Told him to lay on hands and restore his sight. <laughs> that chicken Ananias said, No, Lord, as soon as that guy can see, I'll have bars on my windows and chains around my feet. God said, Nope, now Saul's a pussycat. He's working for me. What'd you think about that? And he won't be arresting my people anymore. Uh uh. Cause he saw the light. Saw the light. Light of the world sure did give him a fright. He's gonna tell everybody all about Jesus Christ. Shining so bright he saw the light. Well, that was just the start for our brother Saul. His lifestyle changed and he changed his name to Paul. He was filled with the Spirit and he didn't think twice. He started in preaching about the Lord Jesus Christ. Folks didn't always listen though. Sometimes they ran him out of town, but as they say, the rest is history. He wrote some books of the Bible and was a missionary. And though he said that the chief sinner's name was Paul, God made him the greatest apostle of them all. And a fairly humble guy, too. All things considered, he saw the light, saw the light. Light of the world sure did give him a fright. So he told everybody all about Jesus Christ. Shining so bright, he saw that Jesus is the light. Thank you. God, we see the light. Yeah. <laughs> well, I have come to love hymns. I didn't grow up with them. I grew up in an unbelieving home. We didn't go to church. So a lot of these hymns that I've come to love, I learned as an adult after I became a believer. But I'd like to play one of my favorites for you. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. The Lord has promised good to me, His word my hope secure. He will my shield and portion be as long as life. 
grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fears relieve how precious did that grace appear the hour I Dangers, toils, and snares I have already come T'was grace that brought me safe this far And grace will Shining as the sun, we've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. We've no less days to sing. God's praise than when we first begun. Yeah, you know, I was actually uh, 42 years old when I became a believer. So I'd lived quite a while and uh, I was an atheist. I was also an alcoholic and uh, Honestly, I messed up my life big time. I lost a young wife and two children. I messed up my career, lost a bunch of money and property, should have been locked up for a crime I committed. I just lied about it and didn't get caught. Um, I got sober at age 33 uh, in an anonymous 12-step fellowship. They said that you had to have a uh, relationship with God if you want to get sober and of course I was an atheist and I thought that was stupid and uh, but I took all their suggestions and I stopped drinking and I haven't started again by the way I've been sober for over 33 years and after a while I did have a kind of a spiritual awakening in the in the sense that I said all right there's a God but I don't know who he is um, I would never have come here to St. John to ask you people who God was because I didn't like organized religion uh, nine years after that, I was uh, playing music in a bar in Anchorage, Alaska. It was early 1995, and I just happened to be living right next door to one of the two Wells churches up there. The pastor was Jim Oldfield. He was my neighbor. He lived on the property, and we made friends. I tried to argue with him about religion and ended up in a one-on-one -on -one Bible information <laughs> class that I just went to because I liked him and wanted to argue with him and drink his coffee. But... Uh, uh, I called him Jim in those days. Jim just read to me out of the Bible a lot. He never would argue with me. And the Holy Spirit did the work. And it took six weeks, but I became one of Jesus' little lambs. And uh, man, the biggest and most important part of that for me right away was the concept of forgiveness. I used to think that you Christians, uh, you know, go to church and try to be good to earn your way into heaven. And Jim Oldfield told me over and over and over again that you cannot earn your way into heaven. There is nothing that we can do to merit God's grace. It's uh, faith is a gift and salvation is a gift of love by our Savior, Jesus. And uh, when I knew that was true, my life changed so much. And uh, I'd like to sing one of the very first Christian songs I ever wrote. Um, I actually had to sing this about a hundred times and I'm not exaggerating, you know, before I could do it without crying, you know, getting choked up. It just means so much to me. But uh, anyway, this is a song about forgiveness.
Sweet forgiveness The sound is so sweet How could you love the unlovable? How could you love me? Why do you help someone who doesn't want you? Why reach for one who doesn't believe? How could you love your enemy And die to set me free? How sweet sound the words Our God says when He forgives Changes the way you think about things Changes the way you live Sinner, are you tired of bearing the burden? Carrying guilt and shame all alone Sinner, aren't you tired? of crying Sinner don't you want to come home Oh the freedom and the comfort of finally coming home To know the depth of His forgiveness to know the struggle is done They struck and spit at Jesus All the while he was thinking of me Bloody and broken and dirty So I could walk away Sweet forgiveness The sound is so sweet How could you love the unlovable? How could you love me? Uh, it was uh, such a life-changing thing to become a believer. I'll never forget that day because um, uh, I, you know, everything that I used to think was true, and I used to think a lot of things were true, and I had great admiration for my for my brain. I was always told that I was a smart kid and uh, that I knew things and. And I had a lot of opinions about life and the world and myself and others and everything. And when I knew that day, right down to my little toenails, that the Bible was true, it really called into question everything I used to think was true. And I remember looking at my first pastor and I kind of, I asked him a question and he understood the question. And basically I asked him, what do I do now, look what you've done to me. I don't, I can't be sure of everything I used to think was true. What do I do now? And he understood. And here's what he said. Your mission now is to live a life that reflects your gratitude for the amazing gift that you've been given. Isn't that, I think that's just perfect, you know. That to me defines a life of joy and peace right there. Just not to earn the gift of grace, not to earn my place in heaven. He didn't tell me to, you know, go into the airport and shake a tambourine and chant and shave my head and stuff like that. 
He didn't say give all your money to the church and, you know, he said, you have been given this gift. Just act like it. That's all. You know, we try to keep God's law not to earn heaven, but in response to heaven. So wonderful. And I did not understand that. That was a big change, a big switcheroo for me. Uh, some years ago, I uh, wrote uh, a group of songs for children. And I recorded a CD and I had some uh, little kids sing with me in the studio. It just turned out really cute. I'd like to do one of those songs for you. Uh, this is another uh, one of my songs that sounds kind of country and I, probably it's because I was born in Montana, you know, that's what makes me sound country, I guess. This is a song about being a saint, which is what we are. <laughs> The Bible tells me I was born a sinner I can't get to heaven on my own But Jesus is the way My traveling plans have changed Now I know exactly where I'm going I'm a saint My sins are a million miles away I'm a saint Hallelujah I'm a saint And nobody can tell me I am well, you might be wondering, how did Jesus save me? Well, he's more than just a teacher who was nice. He's God's own perfect son who loved me so much. He stepped in and died to pay my price. I'm a saint My sins are a million miles away I'm a saint I'm a saint And nobody can tell me I God looks at me, he just sees Jesus. I'm sort of scruffy, but to him I'm looking fine. So I can just be happy living a life of thanks. Cause there's a room in his house and it's all mine. I'm a saint. I'm a saint My sins are a million miles away I'm a saint I'm a saint And nobody can tell me No, the devil he can't tell me And nobody can tell me Well, my home church is uh, Lamb of God Lutheran. It's a Wells outfit. It's located in Madison, Alabama. I live full time on a converted Greyhound bus. And you'll see a picture of that come up after a while. And so I'm not at my home church very often, really. When I'm there, as you might guess, I sometimes play music for worship. <clears throat> but they think I have other gifts as well at Lamb of God. They think I'm a people person. I suppose I am. 
And at times they uh, send me out with another guy to uh, go around the neighborhoods and talk about Jesus and tell people about our church. And I think of Alabama as the Bible Belt. So it's always kind of shocking to me to find out how many people that we talk to have is issues with the biblical truth. They don't think the Bible is true, some of them. I know lots of people don't think that God created everything in six days. I know people who don't believe in hell. <laughs> now, see, there's a problem, because if you don't believe in hell, how is the cross going to mean anything to you, you know? Anyway, I got a song about that. You know, it's hard to be a modern evangelist. So many hard people with hard hearts to win. But God's got the answers to all the hard questions like, how did the universe ever begin? When a scientist looks in an electron microscope at a simple little blade of grass, he'll describe photosynthesis in lots of detail. If you ask him how, he'll say it just came to pass. He'll say amazing things like this just happened. Simple stuff somehow got more complicated because everything sat around for millions of years. That's how the world became populated with animals and bees and plants and trees, clouds and rainbows in the northern lights, mathematics and music, brains and eyeballs, glaciers and whales and butterflies fly in flight. When you don't allow for a God of creation, you're stuck with crazy theories like this. It makes really smart people have fuzzy thinking and they have to make ignorance sound like bliss. And all of those folks who study biology astounded at the wonders of the world they see. Why don't they recognize the God of eternity, praising his name as they fall to their knees? God is greater than human thinking. His thoughts and ways are higher than ours. He says, where were you little man when I made the mountains? Where were you when angels sang with the stars, huh? Where were you? You know, it's rough to be a modern evangelist. This might come as a big surprise, but when people consider the need for a savior, they want to close their minds and their eyes. It's an awful thing to think I might be sinful. I'd rather believe I've got good qualities. I'd rather think I'm not that bad. I'd rather look at all the people that are worse than me. Well, sure, I'm greedy, but at least I'm not lazy. Maybe I'm a drunk, but I didn't beat my wife. Okay, I'm lustful, but not criminal or crazy. I cheat on my taxes, but so does everyone. Everybody else in life, uh, they all do it, don't they? But God demands that we be holy. We break part of his law. We broke it all. God says sin earns death and wages, and every human rescue will stumble and fall. So people invent a God of their choosing. That way they can kind of stay on top. They just make up a God who doesn't punish, or make them feel guilty, or tell them to stop. Lying, hating, desiring, sneaking, questionable, internet surfing at night, children in need while you gamble with your money. Well, you can't judge me, and that makes it all right because, well, because you're not supposed to judge. Judge not. Just stop it. You know, it's tough to be a modern evangelist. You wouldn't think it would be that way, but people don't seem to want the gift we offer eternal life for the future and peace for today. Even though Jesus is the perfect hero, all earthly heroes have feet of clay. He outscored Satan by everything to zero, won heaven for all by taking sin away. Now the shrinks tell us we need more self-esteem, but thinking more of myself brings trouble and strife. Naval gazing just makes it worse. We need better medicine for the pain in life. But hey, you want to talk about self-esteem? Well, you got it in faith in Jesus Christ. He loved us so much, he laid down his life, and that's why we should really feel like we have self-esteem. So why do so many say no to heaven when God wants every single soul to come home? The devil is strong. Father, help me keep singing how you sent your son to die in a tone, telling everybody let Christ be known till I'm singing with the choir on the throne. Just keep on going until I'm gone. <laughs> See, I snuck in a little rap song there for you. Uh, you know, I, I mentioned uh, being an alcoholic. One thing that has happened as I've gone around the country, I've actually been singing in churches now for almost 14 years, very close to 14 years. <clears throat> and uh, I, I've, <laughs> I've uh, sung in, you know, lots of, lots of uh, schools and churches and old folks' homes and once in a while, I'll get to sing in a ladies' retreat, you know, that kind of stuff. But 
Um, about nine years ago, I started singing in prisons. And it really means a lot to me to get to sing for those guys because I could have uh, ended up in prison myself. Uh, this crime I committed was very serious. I could have got four or five years in, uh, imprisonment. And uh, the only reason I didn't is that I'm a good liar. I got away with it. Nobody knew what I had done. Uh, but um, anyway, I, I found out that I love singing in prison. Somebody pushed me into it and made me do it. And I found out I love singing for those guys. And, you know, one thing I always see right away is there's no difference between me and these men, except they got caught and I didn't. Uh, I realized they're not so different from me at all. And, you know, I've also come to see that many of them are carrying the same kind of burdens that I used to carry of, of shame and guilt and remorse and self-hatred. They really, really need Jesus. And uh, I just love singing for him. I've done 28 prison concerts in the last nine years. And uh, I'd like to sing a song that I always try to sing for the guys. It's a, about um, my favorite parable of Jesus. I really feel like uh, he told that story about me. Maybe you feel the same way. I'm a prodigal son in a distant land wasting my father's gifts and Fast as I can World is so conditional And it made me a slave Now my heart is empty Of the love that I've craved Father forgive me I know what I've done Please open your arms to this prodigal son I've been chasing the wind I've been trying to win the prize well the money and the power and that look in a woman's eyes lavish consumption of everything Till I bust With no distinction Between love and lust Father forgive me I know what I've done Please open your arms To this prodigal son Like a boat on the ocean, I'm trying not to drown. Any little thing can lift me up, knock me down. I've squandered it all, I'm empty, left for dead. A broken man of the world, and I just want to be your man instead. Father, forgive me, I know what I've done. Please open your arms to this prodigal son. Won't you open your arms to this prodigal son? I'm kind of in the mood for another hymn. Uh, Lent is far behind us, but uh, I'm still thinking about a song I just love, a Lenten song. Um, I, uh, I recorded hymns uh, with some friends of mine in 2018, um, and, we, and we ended up calling the CD Hymns with Friends just because it was me and a bunch of my musician friends uh, in the wells. and. Uh, we kind of messed with the hymns a little bit, uh, sort of made of my own. Here's probably my favorite Lenten hymn. The 
There is a fountain filled with blood Emmanuel was slain And sinners who are washed there Lose every guilty stain Lose every guilty stain Dying thief rejoice to see that fountain in his day. And there have I, as vile as he, washed all my sins away. Washed all my sins away. Dear dying lamb, your precious blood will never lose its power Till all the ransomed church of God be saved and sin no more Be saved and sin no more Ever since by faith I saw the stream Your flowing wounds supply Redeeming love has been my thing And shall be till I die And shall be till I die When this poor lisping, stammering tongue Lies silent in the grave Then in a nobler, sweeter song I'll sing your power to save I'll sing your power to save Well, I just got time for one more song here, but uh, before I do the last song, I'd like to say thank you so much. You know, it is such an honor that your pastors and your leadership uh, trust me enough to let me do this, you know. Believe me, uh, they think long and hard about who gets to stand up in front of the congregation, and I am so honored to get to do this, and I thank you. When I, uh, I remember the day I became a believer, my first thought was, I don't want to sing in bars anymore, I want to sing in churches. But I had no idea how to do it, and in fact, I ended up singing in bars for five more years. And then I went to work for Thrivent in New Orleans for five years. And then Katrina happened, and that's how I started singing in churches. I, I started calling uh, churches around the country who had helped us rebuild Crown of Life, which is the Wells Church in New Orleans. And I called him up and I said, uh, I'm the musician from that church that you helped. I would like to come do a free thank you concert. Who's going to say no to that? Well, most of them said no, but some of them said yes, and that's how I got started. And I tell you, I was so grateful, and I prayed, dear God, please let me do this. Just keep me going. I'll keep singing until I fall down, if you'll let me. And he has. You know, he's blessed me so much. Um, as I stand before you this morning, I've got CDs, and I wanted to show them to you. There's a Actually, seven uh, in all. I've got two hymn CDs. I've got uh, a CD of songs for kids. And there's a couple of uh, compilation CDs, kind of like Greatest Hits, Volume 1 and Volume 2. Except I don't have any great hits. But, <laughs> but my recordings are available at nph.net. They carry all my music. And uh, also, and this is kind of new, but... Uh, we've rigged up my website so that you can actually download all of my music off of my website if you're the kind of people that like to download. And you can do it for free. Uh, just uh, right from the opening page, there's uh, instructions about how to download my music. And there's a, you'll come to a screen that says name your price. And if you want to, you can write in some money, but you don't have to. If you want, you can write zero. And you're very welcome to take the music for free. I want you to have it. Um, if you would like to help me do what I do, there is a, uh, 
a donate button. It uses PayPal. Or if you'd like to send me something, I've got a virtual uh, snail mail address in Las Vegas, and they, uh, they forward my mail for me. But uh, anyway, again, thank you so much. I'm so blessed that God has allowed me to keep singing in our churches, and uh, I love it more and more as time goes on. Uh, this last song is uh, kind of a joyful moment in the Old Testament. I'm thinking about joyful music because, you know, we just finished up the Easter season and uh, there's a joyful time. But uh, this is the uh, moment in the Old Testament when uh, the Ark of the Covenant, Covenant returned to Jerusalem and King David was so overcome with joy that he, <clears throat> he actually danced. And uh, I've got a song about that. <laughs> Cause the ark was coming home again King David gave thanks and after he prayed He said, I think it's time to have a parade It was a bash like Mardi Gras He declared ecclesiastical law You can play or strum or got a voice to raise Then man, you better join in the praise he got on his ceremonial clothes Got himself a case of twinkle toes He said, you people on the sidelines Now here's your chance to run on home Jump into your dancing pants Yes, yeah, sometimes you just gotta dance Sometimes you gotta sing and clap with your hands His love for the Lord made his feet wanna prance King David just a head, David just a head to dance. Well, he was a shouting and a leaping around. His wife put on a mean old frown. She looked out the window and she started to yell She said, boy, you made a fool of yourself You know you ain't acting much like a king You ain't wearing hardly anything He said, now baby, don't you tell me the reasons I can't I love the Lord so much Hey mama, I just gotta dance Yeah, sometimes you gotta to dance Sometimes you gotta sing and clap with your hands He said, I'll do it again I get the chance King David just a head David just a head to dance Thank you.